Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson here, your friend and professor from Johnson County Community College. And in this short screencast, we're going to debrief on hands-on exercise 3-4 at the end of chapter 3. And by now you realize that the code is not always given to you in the book. By now you're just trying to do these exercises, you're told what to do, but you're not told how to do them. The main thing that I've learned that sets apart people from either understanding this or always being frustrated is terminology. You must know the words that the book is using in their instructions, the precise language, in order to make sense of it. So let's just see what this web page does. It takes a value that you type into an input box with type equals text, and it's triggered when you click the submit button. And every time you put in a value in the text box, and click the submit button, that value is going over here into this list. When you hit the last item, the fifth item, the JavaScript is also keeping track of whether you're number five or not. And when you fill up this list, you're told thanks for your suggestions. So that's when you know your JavaScript has worked correctly. So let's look at the actual code. We are told in the instructions to declare a global variable i and set it to equal to one. We're also told to declare a global variable called list item and set it to an empty string. And we're told to create a function called process input. That process input function is going to be triggered off of an event listener, off of a BTN event listener, and we've declared a variable BTN to be equal to whatever element has the ID of but. And you know me, I don't really like using an element name as the same thing as an ID value. So I might call this S button for submit button and then modify my code there as well so that everything has its own unique name. But back to the code, let's look at this process input function and what it's doing. We know that all the code for the function has to go inside curly braces and we're immediately starting off with an if statement. Following the if statement, we have our test. Our test is in parentheses. And the test is if i is less than or equal to 5. And we're starting i at 1, so this is going to cycle 5 times. If i is less than or equal to 5, then we're setting list item equal to item plus i. And if we look at item plus i, which is 1, we see that our list items are again identified as items 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And we're doing a document.getElementById list item, which is going to be item 1, and setting its inner HTML property to document get element by ID toolbox. And toolbox is that input box. So we're taking the first item of the list and setting it equal to the value that's typed into toolbox. My second statement says document.getElementById.toolbox.value set to nothing. So once we click the submit button, we're taking the value, I'll refresh this, we're taking the value that has been typed into the, the box, clicking submit, we're moving it over, that's what this statement does. It takes the list item, it sets it equal to the value of the box, and then we're immediately telling that box, hey, I want you to be a value of quotation mark, quotation mark, an empty string to clear it. Right after we clear the box, we're doing another if statement, and here's our test. If I equal, 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 that's three equal signs, if i is equal to the number five, both in value and in data type, then document.getElementById results expl, results expl, that paragraph, its inner HTML value is set to thanks for your suggestions. So we can see that paragraph is blank, except if we're on the fifth item, we're going to set its inner HTML value to this text string. That if statement also has to be surrounded by curly braces. After we move the item over to the list, clear the box, and test to see if we're at number five, we then increment the number. So the first time we go through it, i is one. The second time, i is two, three, four, and five, until we get to five. And as soon as we get to five, we have thanks for your suggestions. Thank you.